morning, my friends. It's Catherine at Moonstar Lodge. It's Friday, July 16th or 17th. What 16th. is it? 16th. Friday, July 16th. And uh, we actually have sun here in central Ontario. I'm almost scared. After a week with tornadoes all around us, it's been <laughs> a little iffy. Anyway, this is a quick unboxing video. I haven't done one of these formally, but I'd like to do this and uh, I'm just so excited. I'm going to be showcasing two decks, the Marigold Tarot, and this one is still in the plastic and it came from France. So we will start actually with that one, the one from France, so I can get the bubble wrap off of it. So I'll ask Brian to switch the cameras. So here we are. My cats just love bubble wrap. This was a very interesting experience for them. I'll just pass this off to Vanna White over here on stage left or whatever it is. So, sorry, it's upside down to you. So this is the uh, Tarot Pierre Madigny 1709. I received this this week from Dijon, France. And my French speaking friends in the audience, please excuse my French. I'm in the midst of a French community. I could have had my neighbor come in and read all the French parts, but she'd laugh. Um, so this was made by the card maker to the um, local big wig back in 1709 by Pierre Madinet. And it's the Marseille deck, and it's Marseille level two. So um, I'm going to, I've just taken the lid off. It's a great box. It's uh, marked with the same writing and um, as it would have been presented in 1709. So the first thing I'm seeing here is the Rien de Baston. And uh, so I guess that's the Queen of Wands. And oh, so it says, Bonjour Catherine, here is your tarot of Pierre Madinet, uh, number 717 out of 1500. So this is a numbered deck. Have fun with it. Best Eve. So the man who created this is Eve Renard and Eve um, researched. So I'm going to read to you. I've got a French documentation card giving me the number and one in English. And since you already heard me try to speak French, we'll go with the English one here. So what it says is, Sir Pierre Madigny, master card maker in Dijon, France in the 18th century, Common Cartier de Monsieur, the Duke Governor of the province of Burgundy, engraved this magnificent tarot said to be of Marseille in 1709. A bustling merchant city located in the north of Lyon, Dijon is also well known for its fine tarots and mustard, I must say. That's not on the card, but I'm adding that. The Madigny card making heritage passed on from father to son during the 18th century had um, left to posterity two tarots said to be of Marseille in 1709 and 1739. The 1709 version is the one presently reissued. Initially created by the oldest known member of this Madigny lineage, active from 1709 until 1740. It is also the oldest tarot of Marseille of type 2 referenced. Due to the quality of the engraving and the very good preservation of its original colors, this deck is one of the most beautiful. The present 
edition of this tarot, of which the original is preserved in the Swiss, Swiss National Museum of Zurich, faithfully restores this deck, the masterwork of this master engraver, to the state in which it was originally published. Edition realized in Marseille by Yves Renaud, and um, he is a researcher, and Wilfried Houdouin, like Houdini, it's almost spelled that way, graphic designer, author of the Tarot of Marseille Millennium Edition. So um, this, this is very exciting. So I'm gonna, this, these are not cards. I've gotta take this out now. Oh, you can see even the back of the box has the, the Two of Pentacles on it. So, looks like a pound of butter. <laughs> so I'm just going to carefully, oh my goodness, this is handmade paper on this deck. And what does it say? It says, carte fin en tarot. And uh, fête par Pierre Madinet Demurant proche le cimetière Notre Dame à Dijon. Um, and it says he's the Cartier of the governor of the province of Bourgogne, which is Burgundy. So this is a keeper. This is a, a precious uh, wrapper and it is handmade, hand printed paper. So I'll put this over here with the ancestor skulls. So here we are. My goodness. Um, so we have Roman numerals. You'll notice this is squared corners. Contemporary cards do not have squared corners because they um, wear a little more easily. But this is very thick cardstock. The back has, um, I thought at first it was fleur-de-lis, but it's like a fleur-de-lis that's been pulled into arrow shafts or something. Um, but we have here our first grand hat man is um, the magician. So we don't see the fool card yet. Hopefully it's not missing. So we have the magician, la pépesse, um, l'imperatrice, The emperor loving the colors, loving the, the, there's tiny, tiny detail in these cards that's, um, that's really critical in understanding Marseille decks. So there's the emperor. You'll notice that the um, U's have been shaped into V's. Le Pape, or the Pope. The Lovers, card six. Very different from the Rider Waite uh, lover's card. Angels, young man, young woman, and an and a older woman, probably the mother of the bride, or possibly the mother-in-law, I'm not sure. Then the chariot. We have the justice card. Love the faces, lovely lovely detailed faces a fair bit of detail you really have to look and see uh, all around so justice is holding uh, a sword in one hand and the typical scales in the other the hermit with his lantern the wheel of fortune with monkeys that's more historically correct Strength, card 11, and that is a lion, looks like it has dentures, but we'll just leave that. And then we have um, the hanged man. It's interesting that the Roman numeral here for the number 12 is backwards. A little dyslexia, I think. 
the death card, very traditional. And here you see hands. And what I think are possibly marigolds. Marigolds are associated uh, with death. Um, temperance, including a spelling mistake. And 14 done instead of um, IV, it actually has four uh, number ones in Roman numerals. 15, the devil. Very traditional devil. Um, this, I love this, in historic decks like this, the tower is actually and was originally, even if you look at the, the, the weight um, discussions of this card up in the early 1900s, the Maison Dieu, so, or Dieu, the Maison Dieu, so the house of God, that's what the tower originally was called, and this one is um, definitely true to that. The star, resplendent with her jugs of water. The moon, we have the lobster, we have the two dogs, we have the two gates, um, gate and fort. And it's interesting, the moon has a face, uh, the star does not have a face, but the sun has a face. Now in later versions of the sun, if you remember your rider weight, you will note that it's a little boy, a little naked fellow riding a horse. Some people find that creepy, um, but in this, this image is different. Um, judgment. the world. So a lot of these symbols we actually see repeated in later decks which were um, gone off on a separate path. Oh, there he is, the fool. And that's another part of this. It's This is cyclical. The fool in this deck does not have a zero. He has no nomenclature because this is representative of the cycles of life. And so we complete one journey, we mature and hopefully become wise in this journey and uh, off we go on another level of maturation and journey. So we have the typical um, wands. These are pip cards, meaning you don't see a story. You see the item just in increasing numbers. There's that four again here. So the colors are exquisitely vibrant. Pip decks are um, very historic in nature and some contemporary readers don't like pip decks because uh, there is typically cueing in more modern decks with the story that's being unfolded. But there is a place for these cards. So there's our wands. We get to the court cards here. The valet de Baston and his resplendent red. These those leggings would be very contemporary. Love these hats. The cavalier or the knight de Baston. The wren or the queen. And the king of wands. And I won't take you through the whole deck, but we'll just take you to a couple of cards from each suit. So there's the cups. Okay. Right down to number 10. The page. The knight. The queen. And the king. And here's our pentacle suit with what would be the ace. This is the thing on the back of the box. The two. And carrying on right up till we get to the ten. The valet. It's interesting, his writing is up the side. 
the Cavalier or Knight, the Queen. Very beautiful, very luscious colors in this deck. And uh, there's a beard taking a king for a walk. Crossed legs, little socks and shoes. And then swords. That's quite an elegant card with all its uh, finery. My goodness, this is an opulent uh, suit. The three, the four, again with those Roman numerals, the five, We'll jump to the end here. It gets rather complicated. So without numbers, you really have to know your Roman numerals. Then the, the valet. This valet looks more mature than one sees in uh, contemporary decks. One sees the page character as not quite this mature. And then the knight or cavalier the queen and the king. So what a joy this is. I, uh, I'm very pleased. Um, I will take very good care of this deck and I will bring it out and use it in one of these videos but it's not a deck that I will use a huge amount given it's a numbered deck. I think I'm going to put the fool up front because uh, that reminds me of what I'm used to seeing. So I'm going to set this one off to the side and unbox something else for you. Now I did open this other deck. Um, it's from a Canadian uh, card maker, the Marigold Tarot by Amrit Brar. And this is the third edition and it's still available. So I'm just struggling with the box here for a second. It's just my fingers, it's not the box. The box is beautifully um, gilded. I hope you can see some of the figures here. And um, it's got the little notch. So had I been using that properly, I wouldn't have struggled. But as I've mentioned before, I do have rheumatoid arthritis and it's affected my hands. Um, and the back of the box says, a 78 card tarot deck rooted in life, death and gold, illustrated by Amrit Bar. Brar, sorry, Amrit. So when I ordered this, because this, this is a limited edition, um, I ordered I'll, I'll show you the deck in a minute, but I ordered the play cloth. This is silk screened. It's edged so you can see the skull figures in each corner. I'm not going to ask Brian to zoom out because we have to go back to the cards, but the skull figure is in each corner. This is looking a bit washed out on screen, but it's very, very deeply black and the, the marigold um, the symbolism is associated with death so this is a beautiful play cloth and it's a great size it's got to be um, almost two feet square so I'm just going to fold that up and set that aside and I got the bag to go to put the cards in and it again has the symbols from the deck um, printed right on the bag and it's a silk lined bag now i think this was 15 dollars don't quote me but that's particularly you know i would say probably satin not silk but it's a velvet bag and it's extraordinary that's a, that's extraordinary now at this level i could have had just the cards but I would not have received a book. There's no little white book in this, this box. So I ordered the hardcover book, which explains all kinds of information. Um, and it's a classy book. 
It's even got the little ribbon here to uh, help you keep your page. And um, so the, the symbolism is important in these decks and, and people um, skip by that. Then a list of references that have been used in researching this deck. Um, and I received a few little bonus extras. Let me just close the book. And I did, if I didn't say it's hardcover, it is a hardcover book. Um, and it repeats this, 78 cards rooted in life, death, and gold. So I was sent a sticker of the death card and this could be peeled and put in my journal. I'm not thinking of doing that right now. And then I got a postcard. I believe that's possibly the lovers. And then this postcard. So all signs of um, quality. So let's jump into these cards. As somebody who deals with ancestors all the time, I've been channeling um, collected cards my whole life since since a young person I even designed a deck when I was my early teens and that's the only deck I don't have I don't know what happened to it but um, I have seen the worst of the worst tuck boxes that are the flimsiest of paper and I've seen cards come in a plastic box and I've seen cards come in beautifully made boxes and um, it's the care, the care with the symbolism. Some readers are taught not to learn the symbolism but I disagree with that because the um, there are some traditional symbols that come from the Golden Dawn tradition and then there are symbols that have been added by authors like Waite and then more contemporary authors and and the more they add the richer the depth so here's our fool card so this one came with the fool card on top and um, he's dancing along here with his um, I don't see any little dogs but he's um, got a turban on and his hobo stick. So the marigolds are in the corners of, of the card and they, these are fruit trees. Here's the magician. Holding a crystal ball or buculum I believe it's called. The high priestess. What's interesting is, for most of these cards, um, if they're not labeled, you can't tell the gender that the skeleton is representing. Now, the Empress is obviously delineated as female, but the Magician, you don't know if that was a male or female. So there's the Empress. The Emperor with some really gnarly shoes here. The Hierophant. The lovers, again it isn't actually um, implied the gender of these skeletons. The chariot, good old bicycle, uh, strength, okay so the postcard I showed you was um, the strength card. The hermit, with his lantern, Wheel of Fortune, I'm not seeing any monkeys in this one but I do see the hands with the fickle fingers of fate I suppose, Justice, the Hanged Man, the Death Card, Interesting, interesting symbolism. Temperance with the classic jug of water. The devil. 
the enslavement tethered the tower and in this deck it's not referred to as the house of God the star with a raven skull the moon with a dog skull because typically dogs are depicted on or wolves are depicted on the moon card and the sun which is a lion skull judgment to look deep into the foliage here to see more symbols and the world. Now these are also pip cards so these are flowers depicted and they're all different on the wands um, so I won't take you through that um, but here's the ten of wands the Page of Wands, the Bouquet, the Knight of Wands, that's a jazzy pose, eh? The Queen, the King, and here we go, the Ace of Cups with the skull being used as a cup. And we'll just flip through to the end here. There's the Nine of Cups, the Ten of Cups, the Page, the Knight. Now let's take a moment and just see the difference between the Page and the Knight. So there's fruit here, similar to the Fool card. Um, so unless you knew these cards well, it would be difficult to just very quickly get to know the difference. So the Knight, the Queen, and the King. So we have uh, more advanced things there. So again, Ace, Two, and like all Pip cards, they're going right through. Now this one does have the Contemporary Heart. We're going to just flip through to the Nine. There's the Ten of Swords. So it's pretty easy to understand. That's the complete death when they swords are going through the skull. Here's the page. That's fascinating imagery. He's hanging. The knight. The queen. And the king. And here's the difference in this deck. So instead of pentacles, we have rings. So this is the Ace of Rings. Two, three, and so on. So there are more shots with hands and rings, or rings between hands. The page. Fascinating. We don't know whether this is male or female, again. The knight, same thing, could be male, could be female. The queen, and the king. Most of the kings have turbans, interesting. So this, this is an available uh, deck. I'll have Brian um, indicate in the comments below. Um, and the description of this video, where this comes from. And uh, I hope you like it. I hope this 
this is the beginning of a number of unboxings and perhaps one day I soon I will get a Toth deck, a Marseille deck. This would be classified as a Marseille deck in with the pips and um, a Rider Waite Smith and we'll compare the similarities and differences because there are distinct differences. There's sort of three different playgrounds and some people like all three some people are scared of the Toth decks, and some people um, just like uh, Jodorowsky, the famous film maker who made the film Dune. He says he reads nothing but Marseille. Well, there's there's nothing other decks can provide him. So uh, we'll we'll make that video. Anyway, if you want to flip the camera back, Brian. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will uh, do this again sometime. Have a great week. Blessings. Oh, and I should say, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because then I know that you'd like more of these. Please leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Miigwech.